Hey, how's it going out there in YouTubeville, everybody? This is Pete with Backdraft Bikes. I got my 1200 EX Triumph here. And you know, one of the common complaints everybody has about these bikes is how hot your leg gets in the summertime due to this little piece right here, the catalytic converter. So we're going to talk about a modification you can make to your Dirt Track Scrambler 1200XE and not only will it help your bike run cooler, but it'll also give you quite a bit more power and possibly change the, so the sound. And here is a shot of the temperature as well as the sound that these pipes make without any modifications. All right, so let's get started. First things first, we need to access the back of the heat shield and get everything free. It's pretty easy to do. We're gonna take a uh, five millimeter hex head and we're gonna take off this bolt, that bolt, that bolt, and that bolt. Once we get those off, we can slide things back. Now that we have this piece off, you can see that the bolt that holds the front of that intermediate heat shield in holds this shield in place. And there's two little things that hold this up front here. So we're actually just gonna very gently slide it forward and it comes right off. And you can see there's actually three of them. Make sure that you don't lose the little rubber pieces that go in here or this thing will rattle like the Dickens. Yes! Now this is the beast that's creating all the heat. The reason why is because it's packed with ceramic and it's like an afterburner for unused fuel. What we need to do here is take off these two clamps. Then we need to take off a third clamp that's right there. And you can see there's a bolt buried way down in the cavern and that is a 10 millimeter. We're gonna get that one last because it's extra hard. Again, we've got a five millimeter hex head. Now this side, we've got these two engine bolts that hold the header clamps on, and those are 12 millimeters. They're usually not very tight, but it does help if they're stubborn to get off to do this when the engine is slightly warm. You can see there's a 12 buried back there as well on the lower clamp. Again, using a long extension, it's really helpful to get at that bolt. You can see it comes right off real easy. Like a glove. All right, I bumped up the exposure on the camera so you can see what I'm doing. But this bolt right here is what we're trying to get at. And it is very hard to get to. That's why I use Mr. Ratchet Wrench. Okay? These really help you get into these tight spots. So I'm going down here. There we go. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. All right, now that we have everything loose, we're gonna pull these clamps off. Now remember how these came on because they have to go back on exactly the same way. The top one has a cutout for the oxygen sensor. And sometimes you have to kind of move these things around a little bit. Just like that. Ugh. Once you get it off, you're gonna swing it. And then this one, you're gonna swing down and that's gonna come off first and that one's gonna come off second. You can see how they kind of go together. Okay, little tip, what I like to do, just like that, see the cutout? I like to set these down on the floor just so that I don't forget how they came apart. Now that you got everything loose, you want to get your silencers off. So there's a bolt right there. We're gonna take that off with a 12 millimeter. Then there's another 12 on the other side. Once you get those two bolts out, you can literally take this whole assembly and just wiggle it and it comes right off. Take a 17 millimeter and loosen up the O2 sensor. Once that's off, you can literally just take this and wiggle it back and forth, side to side, without trying to break anything or scratch everything up. And it literally comes right out. Man, this thing's heavy, it must weigh 10 pounds. And now I give you the free spirit. My, 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 my. Look at those welds. I mean, those things, is that a thing of beauty or what? I'm telling you. 
Yeah, so this is the Free Spirit Cat Eliminator, or they call it an H-pipe. Now, some people take the catalytic converter and they just chop it up, but the problem is you're missing that piece when you do that. And so it's gonna flatten out your torque. If you look at any engine building or race car type exhaust, you'll see they always have H-pipes or Y-pipes put in to tie the banks together, because if not, you get uh, an unbalance between the cylinders. So we don't wanna do that, and this is, this is the deal. Got this from my good friend over at A&J Cycles. Thank you very much. So let's put this baby back on, see who goes. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna orient this band clamp so that I can get at that bolt because I know it's gonna be hard to get to once I have this thing in. Okay, so Free Spirit says, Octung, you can reuse the four gaskets, but to save time, we suggest you replace the one that connects the front left headers. I wish I would've known that before I started this job because apparently I have to re remove this gasket here and reuse it, which is gonna be a real pain, if I can even do it. I got it off. I used a big flat screwdriver and ever so gently went around the edges to finally pull it off. If I would have known this didn't come with one, I probably would have just bought one because that's, that is tight. So the oxygen sensor, we're gonna end up screwing it in this way, right? So just like if you were doing a pull cord on a chainsaw or a lawnmower, I'm gonna actually give it quite a few twists the opposite direction so that when it's screwed in, it's not twisted up too badly. Look at that. It's almost perfect. 17 mil. We'll give her a few turns to snug her up and not dent the tank. Next is the clamp. Remember how it fits in. This can be a little finicky sometimes. You might have to play around with it. We're not tightening anything up yet. We're waiting until it's all put back so we can move it around and get the perfect alignment. Once everything's in position, I give it a little bit of a shake. I just wanna make sure everything is mounted. It's not hitting anything. It's not gonna rattle. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna tighten everything up to the recommended torque specs. I'm gonna start with the header. And obviously with this, you go a little on each side. so it's nice and even. There we go. Then the ratchet wrench. When you're tightening up the cross pipe clamp, be careful because that bolt is gonna get longer and you don't wanna drive it into the cylinder head, so you have to kind of rotate it downwards. So you can see that bolt right there is about a quarter inch away from the exhaust. So you can see right there the bolt is for, so you can see right there that the bolt for the band clamp is about three eighths of an inch away from the cylinder head. And you can just fit a ratchet wrench in there to tighten it up. Once you're done with that, tighten up those band clamps and then uh, tighten up the rest of the bolts in the back. In order for this heat shield to fit on, you do have to remember to remove that little clip from the cat and reattach it right there. 
We'll see you in just a second while I tighten all these things up. Okay, we've got it installed. Let's fire it up and see what it sounds like. I just came back from the test drive and it sounds amazing. It's not super duper loud like I thought it was gonna be, but what it does, quite frankly, is give those pops and gurgles when you let off the exhaust. Also, in the idle range, it's much more throatier. Um, it Throttle feels a little bit snappier too on the bottom. It doesn't seem to give anything on the top, but all in all, very impressed, and my leg isn't on fire anymore when I'm driving. So if you would like to hear this thing going down the road, check out some of my other videos on the channel. I have a long-term review on this, which I'll talk about this pipe after I've driven it for a little while. But until then, stay safe out there, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the flip side.